Hey there fellow painters! Today we're going to do a little exploration into the notion of skin tones, what they are, and why I don't think they matter much for miniature painting. We'll have this little discussion while I paint up a female barbarian with what are arguably some non-conventional skin tone paints. Though it can be argued that they do represent skin tones, they just aren't labeled as such. But mostly, I'm just going to have a bunch of fun painting up a half-naked model. Welcome to Treehane Miniatures! I'm going to use just three colors when painting the skin on this barbarian. Dark Plum, Warlock Purple, and Ice Yellow. Three very different paint colors from three different paint brands. Annoying, right? Alternatively, you could replace the Warlock Purple with Magenta and the Ice Yellow with Bright Pale Yellow to keep everything in the Pearl Acryl line. I chose these three colors because they are outside the realm of what most people traditionally think of as skin tones. Lately, I have completely moved away from using anything labeled as flesh color when painting skin on miniatures. In the past, when using paints labeled as skin colors to paint minis, I've never been quite satisfied with the results. I think I fell into a sort of trap early in my painting journey where I felt I had to use the appropriately named paint to paint skin tones. I think that this was a crutch that limited my creativity and my overall satisfaction with the painting process. In breaking free from this constraint, I decided to abandon labeled flesh tone paints altogether. Eventually, I'll add some back into the mix once I'm confident that I no longer allow them to limit my painting progress. When looking at what I have for Vallejo skin tone paints, I find it amusing that the darkest color, which is labeled dark flesh, is basically the equivalent of Donald Trump orange, and if you want anything darker, you have to go outside the scope of their flesh tone line. Now, I am being a little silly here. Vallejo does have face and skin tone sets with a wider range of colors that just aren't labeled as flesh colors. So of course, Vallejo does understand that there is more to painting human skin than just using the stuff that they call flesh tones. And on a side note, if you'd like a deep dive into mixing your own skin colors from a more traditional skin tone scale, the Mr. Pigment YouTube channel has an excellent video on this subject that I will link to in the video description down below. Also, I will have some upcoming videos where I paint a variety of levels of skin pigmentation using a single skin tone recipe. This would be a great time to subscribe to the channel if you're interested at all in painting a variety of skin types on your board game miniatures. One issue that I run into when I'm painting a miniature face with, say, a medium flesh tone is that it doesn't seem to read as a natural skin color, even if it's an exact match to a skin tone that I'd find in real life. I think this is because the miniature is just too small to interact with the surrounding ambient light to the same degree that a real life-size person would. As a miniature painter, I try to be conscious to paint how light interacts with the object that I'm painting, rather than trying to paint the exact color of an object as it exists in the real world. In other words, if I wanted to paint a miniature red car, I don't just grab my favorite red paint and slap it all over the model, because this would leave the model looking very dull and lifeless. A full-size vehicle, on the other hand, that is painted red will interact with the surrounding light to a great degree and have innumerable reflections and points of interest bouncing off of it. On a miniature, I'm aware that I have to paint these reflections and points of interest using colors other than red. I shouldn't merely use a single color paint just because a life-size version of the model is a single color. And this is the point of why I no longer concern myself with painting miniature skin with flesh-colored paints. I'm no longer trying to paint miniatures with an exact color that matches a life-size counterpart. I'm focused on painting light as it interacts with the surface of the model. Basically, I'm trying to approach miniature painting in the same way that a 2D artist would paint. 2D artists use a variety of paint values for shadows and highlights to depict how light is interacting with the subject. This also works wonderfully to build volume in the 2D subjects. Likewise, on a small object like a 28mm miniature, I should use light and shadow in my painting to create volume as I create dynamic light interacting with the surface of the miniature. These miniature sculpts are too small to interact with the surrounding light in an interesting way all on their own. If you're still not buying into the idea that we should be thinking about painting the light on the miniature, let me show you this miniature I painted that isn't interacting with any light source at all. It's some of my most convincing work. But seriously, even when painting something that is completely black, a fairly small portion of the piece should actually be painted with pure black paint. If we painted this 2D image of black cloth using only black paint, it would look exactly like the screen I just showed you. Completely black, no volume. You need to use colors other than black to show how the light is interacting with that black cloth. I I'm kind of all over the place here, so let me get back to the point. Just like I wouldn't use only black paint to paint an image of black cloth, I wouldn't use only skin tones to paint skin. 
I would use colors that represent how the light would interact with that skin tone. Approaching a miniature with the idea that I'm simply painting the light interacting with the surface of the mini is why I almost always start with a miniature that is primed in black. It affords me the most control over the application of light. Starting from pure black basically means that I'm beginning with zero light interaction and any added paint layer is done to inform the viewer on how light is behaving on the model. I start with the darkest shadow colors and progress through the midtones and eventually to the brightest highlights. This is also why you'll never see me struggle to paint something like bright red over a black primer. There are so many options for the transition colors from the deep shadows to the point where I need to start applying the red that it won't be an issue. Whether these colors are deep violets or dark brown reds like terracotta or whole red, the bright red that I choose will build nicely upon them. For this miniature skin, I started with a dark violet color as the base layer to build the rest of the flesh tones upon. By the time I get to using lighter yellows for the skin, there will be no trouble painting over what was once a black primer. A good example of using color value to build volume on this piece is how I'm adding definition to the abdominals even though there isn't any of this definition in the sculpt itself. As you can see on the unpainted miniature, this model doesn't even have a belly button. I decide to create one by gradually layering lighter paints around the navel area. I start dark and just keep building highlights on anything that doesn't look like a belly button. Easy peasy. The basic idea that I use when layering skin colors is to choose three paints a shadow color, a mid-tone color, and a highlight color. I then establish five layers with these colors. The two additional layers are created by mixing the shadow color with the mid-tone color for a secondary shadow color, and the other layer is made by mixing the mid-tone color with the highlight color to create an initial highlight color. For this model, I did something a little different. I mixed the dark plum with the warlock purple at a ratio of 50-50 as usual for the secondary shadow color. But from there, I added ice yellow directly to the shadow color mix, adding more ice yellow to the mix for each subsequent layer. The skin is ultimately accented with a final pass of pure ice yellow. My darkest color is almost always brushed uniformly over all of the model skin. With each additional color layer, I cover less area on the model. I draw the brush strokes toward the light source. More paint will be deposited at the end of the stroke, so this point will appear brighter than where I start the stroke. I want this point to be nearest the light source. I'm also using color value to create volume in the model's attributes where it doesn't necessarily exist. As stated earlier, I did this in the abdominal area. I'm also using this approach to accentuate the right hip by applying less highlight color to the part of the hip that is between the top of the thigh and the top of the hip. Referring back to the unpainted model, it's apparent that this barbarian has some sort of eating disorder, but now with the magic of paint, her thighs look significantly more voluminous. The last step is to quickly paint the rest of the model so I don't have a half-painted miniature in my thumbnail. I think that the purple and pink tones for the skin work really well with the overall finish for this model. If you like the blue light effect on this barbarian, check out this video here for a step-by-step -step look at how I painted the blue OSL, as well as the painting of her two swords. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to join our growing community of painters.